Greetings, Cosmos, and welcome back to Lena's Inception. The Earth will inherit the meek. So, what was I gonna do today? Ah, uh, hmm. Right, side quests. Marshmallows. Marshmallow side quest. I need to kill ten of them for Paige. Plus, other clues have some significance or other, I'm sure. Also, just fully exploring the map, because, wow, I missed a lot of important stuff. Alright. Oh, right. Last time I had made it to this cave, the ruined grotto of apathy. Oh my. Okay, so. Alright, that. That text isn't important, I don't need to stop and pay attention to it. Oh, I don't need to... It's so weird, on on the world map, defeating all the enemies on a given screen is usually worthwhile because they... Uh, because you randomly get rewarded with stuff. But... In dungeons, how many meteorites do I have now? Like f two? Two. Wait, what's this? Amulet strength. Okay. I'm gonna explore this whole sub dungeon. Wait, anyway, yeah. In dungeons, it's only worthwhile to kill all the enemies on a screen if it is necessary. Huh. Huh. Aha. Uh -huh. How many times have I missed a secret like that? All the times. So, moving on, there's a sub-dungeon under the sub-dungeon, the Gilded Grottoes of Grief. Sure, I accept this. Oh! This was totally worth looking for. Now I have three out of the ten uh, meteorites that I want. Ruined Grottoes of Apathy. Wait, there's supposed to be something north and or south of here as well, huh? Well then. Right, I can destroy these rocks with explosions. Hmm, interesting. Not willing to go all the way back up here, so... Off I go, back to the surface. Where am I? So I want to go to south. Oh. Huh. That's not a marshmallow. Okay, I need to go east from here and then north. Hmm. 
Oh, that was my fault. Hmm, can't go directly south from here. Wait... I have a tool that I could be using. Um... Yes. Okay. So I need to go south from here. So what I will do then is... Fake my way north. Yes! And now I can go west from here. I got a runny white potion. I can drink it to find out. Oh, look at that. I have 13 books. P.H. Craftlove. G.G. Ernest. Tombs and Tentacles. Well, this sounds terrifying. Tombs and Tentacles is an eldritch horror game that you can play with your friends. It is directly inspired by the works of P.H. Craftlove. The game requires one Tomb Master, TM, who controls the game world and the non-player characters, NPCs. The player characters are normally controlled by two or more players, but certain scenarios, if the TM is prepared, can be played by a single character on their own. Interesting. As is the fashion for Craft Love's horror stories, there are no happy endings. Be prepared to die, or worse, in many different ways. For a free demonstration of Tombs and Tentacles, call 555-6666. You know, I'm going to write this number down and then actually try calling it. Yes. Five 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 six 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 six. I am sure it should be a simple enough number to remember, but Ernest will answer the call and act as the TM for you while you decide what your player character will do. A common criticism of the game is that its rules are very complex, sometimes requiring non-integer sided dice. Ooh. This is unavoidable due to the nature of the game. Each of the four player characters available in the demo have four stats. They are printed here for your convenience. Jerry, human waiter. Sanity 10, Intelligence 5, everything else is 1 star. Sally, Human Telemarketer, low sanity, well, lower sanity, but better might, intelligence, and speed. James, Human Janitor, uh huh. Tamsin, Squid slash Sports Ball Player. Hmm. You know that although Jerry's might and speed stats are lowest in the game, he can augment these by stacking plates. This comes at the cost of some sanity. When played well, he is the most powerful character available. I thought there was something in off. Well, maybe not off, but that Jerry might have something like that. So! Telephone. Alright, let's call this. Wow, someone finally stumbled across this phone number after all these years. Would you like to play a game of Tombs and Tentacles then, fellow Craftslove fan? Sure. You're lying down under a desk between two bookcases in the middle of a huge library. You're not sure how you got here. We should probably look for a way out. Get up? Sure. You, you'll get up in a second. First, you need to remember who you are. Who are you? I'll be Jerry the Waiter. Oh, that's right. You're Jerry. Your best stat is sanity, which is useful for stacking plates, which you do a lot as a waiter. As you get up from under the desk and begin to stand, you feel the ground tremble. You can hear the book shift from side to side on the shelves around you. I'm a stack of plate. You pile another plate onto the stack you're carrying with one hand. You gain plus one might, plus one speed, minus one sanity. As you get up from under... Let's see here. I'll stack another plate. And a third plate for good measure. Play my sanity at 7, which I think is still the highest in the game. Roll for speed. You roll 1.0 for 5.0 speed total. Imagine that! You narrowly avoid a toppling bookcase and skid into the aisle. The rumbling stops for now. There are two ways to go here. I have no indication of what going either of these directions will do, so I'm going to go left. As you jog down the aisle, the far wall comes up over the horizon. It is a very large library. You notice something strange about the ground up ahead. Take a gander. You sneak up to the mysterious thing on the ground. It is in fact nothing supernatural at all, and you wonder why you even thought it might be. It's just a plain old dirty hole in the ground, with a tentacle coming out of it. Wait, what? Roll for sanity. 
You roll a 4.6 for 11.6 sanity total. Whoa. Your eyes lock on a slimy tentacle. You can't look away or even move. It seems to call you with its shimmying movements. You shiver and back out in a cold sweat. Come hither, you hear it say in your mind. It doesn't move. Oh wait, it's just a rope. You feel so stupid that you lose one sanity. The library hole in front of you is in front of you. Torn books and broken bookcases lie in its depths. A rope hanging from the ceiling appears to go all the way down inside. You could climb down, you think. On the other hand, there are lots of books around here. You could try looking for some words. Words are sometimes useful enough. You know that because you read it once, using words. And you know, it must be true because words know all sorts of things. They're good like that. Yeah, sure, I'll get some words. Words are good, but you're going to have to prove you're worthy of them first. Can you read? Roll for intelligence. You roll a 4.85 blah 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 for 9.85 whatever intelligence total. Oh yeah, nice. You knew this was a good idea. Your eyes lock onto the book's pages. There's a fierce battle between you and the words. What's over in a short order because you're actually not so dumb after all. The book says, The books thank you for your trouble and graciously offer you a word. Your word is caterpillar. Nice. You lose one intelligence in the process. Library hole is in front of you. Blah, blah, blah. Let's climb down. Curiosity gets the better of you. Why did this hole appear? Just why was this rope so convenient in places to allow someone to rappel down into it? You grab the rope and start to abseil down into the darkness. You can't see anything, which could be a blessing. I'm learning new words today. In the depths, you lose all sense of distance and time. The opening of the hole is dis a distant point of light above you, and you're certain that the walls are closing in on you. Alright, so I have six sanity now, I believe, and four might. I'm gonna risk. You flip a coin and it lands on its edge. This seems inconclusive, so you try again. The coin turns a d20, and you get 1.0 for 5.0 might total. Nice, right? Your slippery palms lose their grip on the rope and you fall all the way down. Luckily it's not far, but the rope burn in your palms hurts like hell. You lose one might. You're at the bottom of the hole. You can hear a movement and rustling. Or you can hear movement and rustling all around you. All around? It's all muted whispers and footsteps. Or is it wind turning the pages of a thousand books? Or the far off, the far off sound of an alarm clock as heard through the filter of a dream? Whatever it is, it's quite a din, but you can't see anything. You start to regret coming down the hole, but now you can't find the rope to climb back up. What do you do? I use words. You start shouting into darkness, and immediately you regret it. You're stabbed with a thousand blades from every angle. You could roll for might, but I don't think we have a die with enough faces on it. Your eyes are gouged out, not that you need them in the darkness down here anyway. You're methodically drained of blood. From the sound of it, the creatures here are collecting your blood in a trough. You don't know whether that's because they have some purpose for it, or that's because they want to protect the carpet underneath. You spend several days pondering that subject. After a week, you feel the caress of tentacles on your body. You've long been empty of blood, but you're not dead. Death will not come to you here, but you so wish it would. The tentacles probe every inch of your body, paying very special attention to the newly vacant eye sockets. Then one day, several years later, the tentacles tire of you. You begin to feel very warm shortly after, and you think you might be on a pyre. When the fire touches you, you scream. You scream louder and harder than you ever knew you could. Not because of the pain, but because you knew what would come afterwards. The screaming stopped. The fire had burned through your lungs and pretty much everything else. The pain had all but gone, too. In fact, you couldn't feel anything or sense anything. You knew what had happened. You are now a thinking, conscious pile of ash. Ash has no senses with which to perceive the outside world, nor any muscles with which to affect the outside world. You're trapped in a sophisticated, solipsistic nightmare, a dark dream with no end. Maybe one day. One day! One of these creatures will sneeze and blow your ashes up the hole and out of the tunnel. Then, you will simply be dead. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. It was nice talking to a fellow fan. Click. Okay, that was interesting. Ooh, running red potion. Alright, so... Hmm. Oh, hey. 
The reason that's marked on the map is because a meteor fell here some time ago when two meteors landed here. I never collect. Oh, not a meteor. Cash. Whatever. A thing fell here. Okay, and. Oh. Alright. Well then. What if I go explore this side? And, uh. Try and hunt marshmallows while I'm at it. Ah. Uh, sweet! That's what, meteor number four? Yep, number four of ten. Hmm. I could go many ways here. I want. Whoops! Wrong button. Okay. I can explore anywhere so long as there's an open edge opposite of where I'm trying to go now. I could have finished exploring that one dungeon. Ooh. Not bad. How much money do I have now? 928, getting closer. Oh, hey, who or what is this? Ow. Oh, crabs can actually hurt me now. Hey, you. Psst, hey, want to help beta test the game I'm developing? It's based on a trick a stranger showing with potions and tunics. The game's called Hall the Hallucinatory Battle Arena. Enter the cave to begin. Beat nine waves for a special reward. Um... Ow. I was paying insufficient attention. Yes! Marshmallow! I am glad I came here. Oh wait, the marshmallows are the easy ones? Whoops! Maybe I should change my, uh, shield to a shield. Ow. Passive healing like I have right now is ridiculously useful. Oh, good, a heart. Maybe I should have saved that for Paige. Oh, Paige was saving that heart for me. How thoughtful of her. Oh, hey. These ones wait until I'm sufficiently close. So I got, what, four marshmallows so far? Oh man, I've used up half my arrows already. Alright. Okay, so, smash my way through all this. I'm trying to avoid stepping on the poisonous slime they leave behind. Viscous Orange Potion. So 
I am curious about all these potions I keep picking up and have no idea what they do. Alright, and what's this t Oh no! Sharks! Huh, is Paige just not allowed to contribute in the hallucinatory battle arena? If that's the case, then I'm going to devour all the hearts for myself. Yeah, eat bomb, jerks. How much damage does the bomb do? I have no clue. I haven't done enough experimentation to get a feel for how powerful anything is relative to anything else. And I assume this sword I have is more powerful than the hero's sword. Oh no, 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 no. No. Oh no. Oh, I get to start from... Okay, so... Why don't we talk face to face? Okay. Gladly. Six more of them. Well, they're easy enough to get in here. A soft round lump of sugar, egg, and gelatin. <laughs> That's cute. I have no idea which round I had made it to. Seven, maybe? Hey Paige, what up? Let's get out of here before we try and talk. Alright Paige, what up? Are you ready for our celebration? Yes. Give me a moment, I'll set everything up. A campfire? Hold on. I accidentally stopped my clock to read things and I never restarted. After this event, I'm going to call it quits for the day. A campfire? Yes, I thought it'd be nice to take a rest. You do remember to take breaks from adventuring, don't you? Skewer one of those marshmallows on your sword and put it in the fire. It's burning. Give it a moment. Okay, now eat it. What? Just try it. Murk, murk, murk. It's good, right? Too sweet. There's something else, but I'm not very good at putting my feelings into words. So I put my feelings into this instead. I want you to have it. I got a locket. I've earned the affections of a certain librarian. Neat. Now you're being too sweet. As Lena and Paige sit by the campfire, Paige reads to Lena a play she has been writing. The play is terrible, but afterwards, for the first time in a long while, Lena sleeps well. Aw, that's sweet. Alright, well, join me next time when I continue exploring the world and committing side quests and also hunting for meteors. Meteorites. Meteorons. Uh, saving, saving. Okay, join me next time.